what causes that 20% consumption reduction? And, and, and it really comes from three or four different areas. One is, you know, typically when you vend something, you vend it in the, in the quantity that you consume it in, not the quantity that's convenient for the manufacturer of the product to package it in. So are there, for instance, drill bits? Drill bits come in packs of either 10 or 12. Who uses 12 drill bits? That's a pretty rare thing, right? We typically use one or two drill bits to get the job done. So consuming it in the right quantity and not giving the user 12 drill bits, because what happens with the 12 drill bits? He uses two. The other 10 go into his toolbox, or they get laid up on a, on a work counter or something like that, and that becomes suspended inventory. We bought it. We have it. But we have no idea where it is, and no one else can use it. So that's a big component of the 20%, right? Uh, the second component is, is be building the feedback loop, which creates a little bit of a competitive attitude. You know, we start to feed back to the employee base who's using what, how did day shift do as compared to night shift, right? Those kinds of things, and we build a little competitive uh, attitude around the, the plant floor so that basically what we do is we tell the employee base that we care. We care about how much stuff that we use. We care about the MRO spend. So that's a big part of the 20%. And then the last part is, is breaking, when, when a process is broken and we're consuming more than what we should be consuming for that particular process, having the vending machines or the point of use system lock down and say, you're done. The process is out of control. We need to involve a supervisor at this point, right? Instead of breaking every tap in the factory, every 3, 8, 16 tap, we stop it at five and say, the process is out of control. A supervisor needs to come and look at it. 